is, Lane. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Hello, my name is Eddie Coronado, and I want to thank you for taking time to hear my program on prosperity. Now, before I talk about how you can use the universal law to attract money, I want to let you know why I made this recording. After writing about prosperity and teaching a number of classes on the subject, I decided to create my own audio program that explains how anyone can tap into the awesome power of the universal law. One of the first things I tell my students at a prosperity class is that their success depends entirely upon how well they can understand the mechanics of the universal law. And I should add to that by saying that manifesting money is a spiritual science that can be explained and used by anyone. The spiritual laws that govern the manifestation of money, or anything you want to manifest, are as powerful and workable as the laws that govern physics, math, and the other sciences. Like many people, I first learned about prosperity during a time in my life when I was in a financial bind. I was desperate for cash, so I dedicated myself to prosperity thinking, and in time I learned how to make it work for me. Eventually, I won $50,000 in my state lottery. I started my own successful business with almost no cash at all. And now I have more than enough money to travel and to spend time doing what makes me happy. Along with my lottery win, I have won more money, theater tickets, online contests, trips, and many other prizes. As time passed, I paid close attention to the manifestation process and soon I was writing magazine articles about prosperity and teaching people like you how to attract money. This audio program is a result of many years of study and it covers many points such as the law of attraction, affirmations, the practice of receiving, and other powerful ideas. I would suggest that you listen to this program over and over again, paying particular attention to my suggestions. They say that repetition is a mother of learning, and I honestly doubt that anyone can absorb all this information in one sitting. So as you listen to my program, be sure to take notes for future reference, and always keep this program handy for review. Many people have used these prosperity methods to pay off bills, win money, make more sales at work, or to prosper on some level in life. I cannot guarantee that you'll win the lottery by hearing this program. All I can do is show you how to use the universal law in your life. It's a powerful force, and you can use it for your good, but you must understand, number one, how to approach this power, and number two, how to use it. The truth is that there are no limits to the amount of prosperity you can attain. The question is, are you willing to do the spiritual work necessary? Of course, prosperity also means having good health, a home, friends, and peace of mind. But most of us already have some or all of those things going for us. So we'll focus on money at this time. In order to attract the money you need, you must have a clear understanding of the universal law. Now don't let that title scare you. It's pretty simple. The universal law is a life force of the universe, and it's a part of everything in the cosmos. Some people recognize this power as God, but others call it the infinite. The important thing to remember is that this awesome creative force is expressed through our consciousness, and it allows us to attract whatever we subconsciously believe in. In other words, you will attract into your life exactly what you radiate outwardly in your thoughts feelings, and in your expectations. Now you might ask me, how does the universal law allow us to attract whatever we believe in? Well, the answer, listener, is that the very nature of the universal law is to mirror or duplicate our innermost thoughts. And this is an important idea to remember. In fact, what I'm about to tell you next is so important that I want you to make a mental note of it. This awesome power does not know how to reject you. The universal law can never, never tell you no. I repeat, the universal law does not know how to reject you or to tell you no. And this is a great shock to some people, 
because we as a society are so used to hearing stories about how God made the people suffer or how God rained down fire upon a certain village. But that's not the whole truth. When you look at the facts, you'll see that certain people in history fell upon hard times when they lack faith or when their faith faltered. In much the same way, the universal law will respond to your needs and desires. But you must have faith in the creative process. And the way to build your faith is to understand how it works. It's as simple as that. You might want to think of the universal law as a waiter in a restaurant. If you go in and order steak and eggs, for example, the waiter will not tell you no, that you're going to have fried fish instead. His job is to get you the steak and eggs, or whatever you decided to order, no questions asked. Like the waiter in the restaurant, the universal law does not have an opinion about what you should be doing or how much money you should be earning. So this option allows you to create the life that you want with as much money as you see fit for yourself. You can be rich or you can live from paycheck to paycheck. The choice is always yours. Now you might say, wait a minute, Eddie. If everyone in the world can be well off, then why are there so many people poor or barely making it? Well, the answer, listener, lies in their belief system. As a society, we have been taught that we have to struggle and fight for whatever we want. If we want a raise at work, then we have to push and strain for it. And some of us have even been taught to believe that you can only get rich from hard work and from the sweat of your brow. But the truth is that you could have been well off all the time. If your faith is strong enough and if your dedication is wholehearted, then somehow everything you need will come to you and be a part of your life exactly when it needs to be there. This means that you will have enough money to pay your bills, to go out to eat, to travel, and to do whatever you need to do for yourself. You see, listener, our life unfolds for us each day according to the quality of our thoughts and subconscious beliefs. If you continue to attract negative financial situations in life, then guess what? The reason for this is that somewhere in your innermost thoughts is a belief in lack and struggle. But if your thoughts are positive, and if you have a deep feeling that you are always taken care of, you will always have money, and good things will manifest in your life. You will be a magnet for prosperity. The question is, what do you subconsciously believe in? You see, what you believe about money is important, because your greatest obstacles to prosperity are your thoughts, your beliefs, and most importantly, your expectations. So what do you expect financially? Do you have clear-cut goals? You need to know exactly what you want and you must be dedicated to sticking with it until it comes to pass. If you are unclear or half-hearted in your dedication, the universal law has no choice but to respond half-heartedly because it will be responding to or mirroring your weak desires. So take out a 3x5 card and write down your financial goals. Do you want $10,000 or will $100,000 work for you? If you cannot see yourself with a million dollars in the bank, then don't make that your goal. But if $50,000 feels more comfortable for you, then write it down and know that this or something better is on the way to you. Once you've written down your goal, look at it every so often and remind yourself of the wealth around you. We live on an opulent planet and there are new millionaires springing up every single day. Some of these millionaires go out and earn their money. Then there are those who win the lottery or a sweepstakes or they hit a jackpot in Las Vegas. It's important to center on the thought that if anyone has a million dollars, you can too. One of my favorite prosperity exercises is to visit a Rolls Royce showroom. When I look at all those beautiful cars, I vividly imagine how it would feel for me to own a Rolls Royce. I visualize myself behind the wheel, driving down the coast in my Corniche convertible, and then I see myself in my mind's eye taking it home. Being around opulent cars and homes reminds me that it's possible for me to have wealth because other people have it. So if you want to attain a consciousness of wealth, then visit places where you will find wealth. You will never feel and experience opulence downtown at the subway station or in a public park. 
If you want a taste of what having money feels like, then plan a trip to the fanciest place you can think of. It might be an affluent neighborhood, a high-class hotel, an expensive restaurant, or a fine department store. If you choose, for example, the expensive restaurant, then go there. It doesn't matter if you can only afford the coffee and some sweet bread. The fact that you're there will give you the opportunity to feel the opulence so that you can make these rich feelings a part of your own feelings. And that's what's important with this exercise. While you're there, take note of the plush furniture and the lavish atmosphere of the place. And remember the patrons as they drive up in their expensive cars. As you become familiar with how abundance feels, you can call upon these vivid memories when you practice visualizing your own prosperity. My very first time at a lavish hotel was in Beverly Hills. On my way up to the room, I noticed how fancy and palatial the lobby was. The carpet was about two inches thick. There were fine paintings on the walls, and a huge grand piano was in the lobby. The rooms went for about $300 a night to $2,000 a night, and you could tell that only affluent people stayed there. On the way back down that afternoon, I stuck around in the lobby, admiring the feel of the place. Exercises like this one help to increase your consciousness of wealth. If you want to attract abundance, then stay away from places where there is constant talk of lack and limitation. Negative energy has the power to drag you down, and if the negativity is strong enough, you can feel it because it presses up against you and tries to invade your thoughts. If you are not strong on a spiritual level, then it can hinder your growth and influence you in the wrong way. So if your friends talk about lack and limitation, then change the subject or go somewhere else. But don't tell them that you're working on prosperity thinking. Of course, if you have friends who understand this type of philosophy, then it's okay to share with them now and then. But the fact that you are keeping it a secret actually strengthens your ability to attract prosperity. For example, when you are experiencing fear and you decide to talk to someone, it often makes you feel better. This is because energy was released when you talked about the situation. If you did not tell anyone about your fears, then your emotions would get the best of you. So, when you are working on a prosperity consciousness, the very fact that you keep it a secret makes your power grow stronger because you don't have the negative outer distractions to overcome. Believe it or not, listener, you can actually dissipate weeks of spiritual work with one silly conversation or argument about your dedication of prosperity. So keep your lips locked. It's interesting to note that the word secret has the same root meaning as the word sacred. So make your prosperity work sacred by keeping it a secret. As your inner energy grows, you will see a change taking place in your life. Instead of you moving through life and experiencing whatever life decides to throw at you, you will begin to see that your life is taking on a powerful meaning and that it is unfolding for you according to your subconscious beliefs. Money will last longer. People will pay you what they owe you and you will attract greater financial opportunities and you will even experience a spiritual lightness and assurance that your goals are manifesting. The quicker you can raise your consciousness, the faster you will get the money you desire. How creative are you? Even if you live in an apartment project for low-income people, you can still fill your mind with thoughts of abundance and thereby invoke the universal law. I have a friend who lived in a very old apartment building in the rough side of town. She affirmed her abundance faithfully and she kept holding thoughts of financial abundance in her mind day after day and month after month. This lady was dedicated. She did everything she could on a spiritual level to attract financial prosperity. At night, as she went to sleep, she imagined owning a large house in the very rich part of town. She visualized owning a new Volvo, and she saw herself in her mind's eye taking trips around the world. As she stuck to her inner vision, and as she remained dedicated to this action plan, she eventually met a wonderful man who sold real estate. A year later, she married this man, 
and on her wedding day she was given a new house and a new Volvo by her new husband. Now the next thing I want to teach you about is a very important point. So please take notes. In fact, it's so important that you should spend extra time on this portion so that you can absorb it all before moving on. Well, it is necessary for you to have clear-cut goals about how much money you want, you must understand that you are dealing with a spiritual power that has the ability to deliver your money or whatever you want from any number of channels. You might win the money, find it, you might be given it, or you might even start a business that will earn you all the money you need overnight. You cannot demand that the universal law give you $50,000 by 5 p.m. on Thursday and expect to get it. The universal law does not work that way. It's not a power that can be manipulated or forced. By forcing or trying to manipulate, you actually stop the manifestation process because forcing and manipulating are ways of saying that you don't believe in the creative process of the universal law. So if it's $50,000 that you want, then you should turn within and develop a consciousness of wealth by following my examples. Once this is done, then the universal law can begin to deliver, but you must be open to receiving the money or whatever you need from any channel that it comes through. You see, listener, you are a co-creator with the universal law because you are aligning your thoughts and actions with it. But you are out of bounds once you start demanding and telling the universal law that your money must come from a specific channel. Another way to block your prosperity is to be impatient and jealous. Impatience is a low energy emotion and it is a strong affirmation that you are unsure if the universal law will deliver. In addition to this, jealousy is a negative power that can stop your prosperity from manifesting too. By expressing a feeling of jealousy, you instantly block your good from manifesting because your constant feelings of jealousy radiate out from you and they are strong affirmations that someone else has what you want. So when someone around you like a friend or a co-worker comes into money or experiences abundance, you should mentally bless that person, acknowledge his or her good fortune, then turn your thoughts back to yourself and know that this or something better can happen to you too. The next thing I want to teach you is the correct use of affirmations. Our words that we speak are very creative and they have the power to shape and influence our daily lives. This means that we can use the magnetic force of our words to attract the money we need. By repeating certain phrases over and over, we create in our subconscious mind a firm belief in abundance and the result is that we attract more money. It's a spiritual law that what you firmly believe in, you will draw into your life. One of my favorite affirmations is this one. I am a rich and prosperous child of the universe. I am financially prospered in all that I do. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly, and I give thanks for my good. The key with affirmations is to make your affirmations as positive and as short as possible. This way, they can take root in your subconscious mind with ease. Some people speak their affirmations in the afternoon or in the evening, but the very best time to affirm your wealth is in the morning. When you first wake up, your mind is running at about 12 wave cycles per second. And this is a time when your subconscious mind is most impressionable. It's fertile like the soil. So you should put positive ideas into your mind first thing in the morning. The words that you first hear in the morning have the power to set the stage for your entire day. So make your morning thoughts and affirmations positive. Do you remember that particular morning when you woke up and the radio alarm clock was playing? That song that you heard in your thoughts all morning long? You literally could not get that song out of your head. The reason for this is that you heard that song when you woke up upon awakening in the early morning hours when your mind was most impressionable. So your mind recorded that song and the result is that you heard it again and again all morning. This is why you should never wake up to a news broadcast. 
Many times the news is negative and you don't need to start your day on a negative note. So in the morning, before you climb out of bed, you should speak your affirmations for a few minutes. If you're in a situation that prevents you from speaking your affirmations in bed, then go over them in your thoughts for a few minutes. Or you should set aside a few minutes when you can actually sit down and write your affirmations on a pad of paper. During the course of your day, you must watch carefully the kinds of words you use to describe your life. Do you use creative, vibrant words to describe yourself, or do you say negative things about yourself? The subconscious mind does not know the difference between a serious statement and a joke, so you should never joke about your finances. A lady I know is always saying, I am so broke, I am so poor. As a result, nothing good ever happens to her, and she is always sick on top of that. Sadly, she keeps herself in financial lack through her negative beliefs and words. Okay, the next thing I'm about to tell you is another important point, so take notes. Your thoughts, your words, your beliefs, and your actions are constant affirmations to the universal law of what you are. Many people have never heard the idea that an action is an affirmation, but it's true. And if we want the universal law to respond to our thoughts of abundance, then we need to be positive in every single area of our lives. When a negative thought comes up, immediately replace it with a positive affirmation or an uplifting memory of a time when you manifested enough money to meet your needs. As for watching your actions, this is what I mean. Where do you shop for your clothes? Do you spend time in secondhand stores when you can easily go to a department store and buy what you need? Do you keep a thousand dollars in the bank and still buy the cheapest jacket you can find? Of course, if you don't have the money for a quality jacket, then it's understandable to buy a less expensive one in the meantime. But if you have the money for a good quality jacket, then go out and buy one single good jacket and make that your personal affirmation that you always have the best. Having money is not only an affirmation of wealth, but spending it is also a more powerful affirmation that you always have the money on hand. You must always act with wisdom when it comes to cash in the bank, listener, but never hoard money when you need to spend it for something important. Along with affirmations, another exercise you can use to attract your prosperity is the use of visualizations. The purpose of this exercise is to establish in your mind a clear vision or a mental picture of what you want, which is important because you need to have a mental image of what you want in order to get it. In addition, when you visualize your desires, sometimes feelings about these desires surface and you can use these feelings to modify your goals if necessary. For example, if you set a goal to manifest $100,000, but if you have trouble believing that this can actually happen for you, or if you get an intuitive feeling that you should aim a bit lower, then you should modify your goal to $50,000 or something that feels a lot better for you. Pay attention to your feelings, listener, because that is your intuition speaking to you. When I needed to pay off some credit card bills, I would set aside a few 10-minute periods each day in which I would close my eyes and visualize my wallet filled with cash. Then I would visualize my credit card statements reflecting a zero balance. This was a happy and refreshing visualization for me, and I enjoyed this exercise. The important thing is to create a visualization that is positive and that you can accept. Many years ago when I started performing this exercise, I remember having trouble with certain visualizations. For example, during my exercises, I would try to imagine seeing my bank statement reflecting a $1 million balance, but I could never see the one. All I saw were a lot of zeros in my mind. As my inner understanding grew and as I modified my goals based on the feedback I received from my subconscious mind and my feelings, I started visualizing a check in my name for $50,000. That visualization was a lot easier for me and it was a dollar amount that felt better for me. As I continued to visualize and affirm my prosperity, that is exactly what the universal law delivered to me. 
$50,000. So if you find that certain visualizations are difficult for you to see clearly in your mind, then it means that your subconscious mind is talking to you and telling you to modify your goals a little bit. The power that you have within you, listener, is a very vibrant and intelligent power, and it is always looking out for your good. So pay attention to your feelings, because that is how the subconscious mind communicates with you. Now we are coming to a portion of my program that I have a lot of fun with. It's not only one of the most interesting aspects of this philosophy, but it's also one of the most powerful exercises that you will ever do to help yourself manifest the money that you want. In fact, this particular exercise is so powerful that it can speed up the manifestation process greatly. But interestingly, up to 99% of the prosperity products on the market never even mention this topic, which is known as a practice of receiving. The practice of receiving is so vital that if you cannot learn it well and practice it, you will limit your ability to receive from the universal law by as much as 50%. When you mention receiving to the average man on the street, he'll tell you that it's better to give than to receive. But in metaphysics, and especially in prosperous thinking, you must learn to accept gifts from people if you expect the universal law to respond to your thoughts of abundance. The truth is that many people in our society have a very big problem with receiving. They know how to give, but they cannot receive. It makes them very nervous. In fact, I have seen many people become visibly nervous, drop their keys, or get sweaty palms when someone has offered to give them something. Does this sound familiar, listener? Of course it does. We all do it. I have been there myself, and I have dealt with the nervousness that sometimes surfaces when someone has given me something, or when someone offers to give me something. But the key here is to press on and to practice receiving even if it makes you nervous at first. Low self-esteem and fear of the unknown are some of the reasons that we have trouble being good receivers. But one of the most influential factors in our inability to receive is that our society in general teaches us that wanting more material possessions is greedy. We have even been fed the lie that money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of evil, but it's the love of money that often causes problems for us. Money is neutral, and it is not evil because you can use it to buy a vacation, a new car, or to pay your rent. But greed comes into the picture when you want your share, and you want your neighbor's share too. That's what greed is. There is enough money to go around for all of us, because in the universal law there is no such thing as lack. So in order to align yourself with infinite possibilities, you must learn to say yes when people offer you money, an opportunity, or whatever comes your way, even if it's a small thing like paying the bill at a lunch truck. Only the best receivers can make the most of prosperity thinking. So, during the course of your day, you should look for opportunities where you can practice receiving. It doesn't mean that you have to use everything that people give you. Give some of it away, but by being open and receptive to whatever people offer you, you are metaphysically balanced and in alignment with your affirmation that you are a prosperous person. You see, listener, up to now, your affirmations and your dedication has been to attract more money. And if you refuse whatever comes your way, even if it's a free lunch, you are denying the flow of substance into your life. So if you affirm that you are a prosperous person and you are always provided for by the universe, but if you make a fuss because your coworker wants to pay for lunch, you are setting up a spiritual roadblock and you have canceled your affirmation of wealth. In short, you are imbalanced metaphysically. The universal law being totally and completely balanced cannot manifest what you desire because your energy is not in alignment with it when you say one thing and you do the other. So the next time you go out for lunch with a co-worker or a friend and he or she offers to pay for the meal, just accept it and say thank you and don't think about what you can do to repay your friend. If your friend is supposed to get something back, then the universal law will take care of the details. 
On your way back from the restaurant that day, you should review the course of events and give thanks that the universal law has delivered to you a free meal and look forward to more manifestations of this power in your life. Remember that you are dealing with energy and as energy it must respond to you some way, somehow. This is why I said earlier that the universal law can never say no to you. Since the universal law is intelligent energy, it must always respond back to you somehow. Look at it this way. The universal law will respond to you in two unique ways. The number one way that it will respond to you is by saying yes when your energy is high enough and when you are able to accept whatever you have set your heart on. This is when you have established a mental equivalent, as Dr. Emmett Fox said. And the number two way the universal law will respond to you is by saying, wait. This means that you need to work on yourself a little bit longer. Your prosperity is still in the process of manifesting, but it will take a little while longer as you keep pressing forward with your dedication. But you can rest assured that the universal law will give you what you have set your heart on if you persist and if your dedication is strong. One of my favorite examples of how I persisted in the area of receiving is that one day while at work, a lady friend of mine offered me some shoes that her husband never wore. At that time, I was a new student of metaphysics, and I never refused anything that came to me, even if it was a few cookies or a can of soda. Anyway, this lady friend of mine said that the shoes were new and that they would fit me perfectly. When she gave me the box of shoes, I looked inside, and I was shocked to see a pair of two-tone leather shoes that looked like they went out of style 25 years ago. The shoes were tacky, and where you tied the laces at the top, there was a patch of mink fuzz. I almost laughed at the top of my lungs, but my friend was so sincere about giving me the shoes that I held back with all my strength. At that point, listener, I had two options, to throw myself on the floor laughing or to act in accordance with my affirmation that I was a good receiver. Now on the way home that afternoon, I took those shoes to the first Goodwill store I could find, but later I reflected on how I was able to receive in spite of the tacky disco shoes, and that is the way you should be, listener. You should be so good at this receiving exercise that you never pass up anything that comes your way. By doing so, your affirmation that you are a good receiver is enhanced, and most importantly, your energy is balanced because your thoughts, words, emotions, and actions are all in accordance. This is what makes the universal law of attraction work for you, and this is what will draw the money into your pocketbook. This also means that you cannot pass up money you find on the street, like when you see pennies on the sidewalk. The universal law does not distinguish between a penny and a million dollars, so you should always stop and pick up those coins you see on the ground. Then you should reflect on how balanced you are becoming and how much in tune with the universal law you are. I have a certain place in my house where I keep all those coins that I find on the street. Every time I pass by those coins, I give out a thanks to the universal law that I have received those coins because I know that these small objects represent energy coming to me from the universal law. And as you, listener, recognize those little things in your life as energy moving toward you from the universal law, you will eventually expand your personal power. And one day you will find that your energy is strong enough to pull that goal into your life, no matter what it is. Now you might think it's silly to go around picking up pennies and to receive tacky disco shoes or whatever from people who want to give you things. But this exercise is not about collecting pennies. It's about your dedication to prosperity and being a good receiver and opening yourself to the flow of unlimited potential. So, a good example for you is to focus on receiving all that is offered to you, even if it's a cup of coffee or a small gift. And when you do receive, you should take a mental note of your ability to receive. Give thanks that the universal law is responding to you and then rest on the thought that the money you want is just around the corner.
Okay, now that we've talked about the universal law, goal setting, affirmations, visualizations, and the practice of receiving, you are now ready to go out into the world and put this knowledge into use. I have given you the most powerful prosperity program that you might ever come across. Like I mentioned before, I have used this same program to win $50,000 in my state lottery, and I have also used it to build a lucrative business for myself. The power of the universal law works for you if you work it. But the key here is that you live each day in dedication to the principles I have laid out for you. That is what is known as a prosperity action plan. It took me eight months to manifest a $50,000 lottery win. And during that time, I affirmed my prosperity faithfully. I practiced my visualizations and I remained dedicated to my goal. Most importantly, I made sure that all my actions were in alignment with what I was affirming. Nothing negative ever came out of my mouth, not about me or about the people I knew. Since I was affirming wealth and prosperity, I knew that I would have to accept all that came to me, and I also understood that my words and actions would have to be in alignment with the order I placed with the universal law. When negative thoughts came into my mind, I would instantly replace them with thoughts of abundance. I did the same with my words and my actions, which I guarded carefully. You can only expect to receive from the universal law that which you are able to believe. You see, listener, in order for your prosperity to manifest, it must come through your consciousness. It must come through you, through your beliefs, and through your expectations. If there are negative beliefs and negative expectations in your mind, then nothing can flow through you. In my case, it took me eight months to clear out all the negative garbage about money that was in my mind. Had I been able to overcome all the negative garbage in one month, then my prosperity would have shown up in one month. Some people listening to this program will be able to manifest whatever they want in a matter of months, but to others it might take a little bit longer. The determining factor is how much mental clutter and negative thoughts do you have in your mind. So stick with the action plan, listener, and make each day a holy day in which you can learn from the universal law around you. If you stick to your vision, and if your thoughts and actions are in alignment with the universal law, then all the power is yours, and you will reach your goal. This program is copyright 2002 by Eddie Coronado.